This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! ban list discussion video because sweet fucking Christ, we actually have a ban list in like a timely manner for once in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! Very interesting, very interesting indeed, and it was definitely a list that I was expecting to be coming, although I didn't expect it nearly as soon as we actually got it. I, this is, it's literally been 10 days since the uh, Circuit Break set came out and introduced us to Spiral Double Helix. It has been literally 10 days, two weekends worth of events, being YCS Dallas on Premier Weekend and YCS London this past weekend that just took place. So we've had 10 days between Circuit Break and between the time this list was spoiled to us. That's actually, that beats Pepe's time of 13 days between set release and list being uh, being dropped. So it's very interesting, but it's definitely not an emergency ban list. I wouldn't call this an emergency ban list. I would just call this just a regular Forbidden Limited list that falls into the confines of space when Konami told us that the next Forbidden Limited list would be coming at the soonest. Because on the September list, they told us this list will be in effect and no new list will come into play until November at the soonest, and that fits into this time frame, this demographic. So I don't think this is an emergency ban list, I think it's just a very fine-tuned and small regular ban list, although all the other YouTubers and all the people in the community are going to throw around, oh, it's an emergency ban list, because it's a buzzword. It's, it's, you know, it's something that gets attention. Hell, I might even have emergency ban list in the title of this video. Haven't decided yet, haven't come up with that one yet, uh, but anyway, so what we have is we have this ban list that has been dropped on us on October the 30th, and it goes into effect on November 5th or 6th, regardless, it goes into effect before the weekend, it'll be well in effect before YCS San Diego, which is the next prominent event that will be taking place, and this list only makes four limitations, but they're all very key, they're not necessarily the problems that I would have probably addressed or solved in terms of like making spirals not be a powerhouse in the format, but it definitely does, you know, address some problems. So as long as we're getting lists that address some problems, even though they may not be the problem, I think that's perfectly fine. But anyway, so we have four limitations, like I said. The first limitation is Blackwing Gofu the Vague Shadow, which is something that's very interesting uh, in terms of a limitation. I think it's been proven that this card, as of its current point, is not too broken in Link format. Uh, the TCG side of things kind of, you know, confirmed this, whereas the OCG, they preemptively limited the card as so that it would never become a problem. I don't think this card would ever become a, you know, hard-coded, hard-set, this is a problem, until we had gotten something like Crystron Needle Fiber, uh, but but right now, like, just, just being able to Blackwing Gofu into just, like, a Link 3 is not that game-breaking, and I think we've, you know, sort of established that. Uh, but the main meat of the format uh, hits that this ban list provides are the three hits to Spirals that exist, because Spirals dominated YCS Dallas, and they dominated YCS London. There were two events back-to-back -back on back-to-back -back weekends, and Spirals took 29 out of 32 top spots in Dallas, with the other two decks being two Trick Stars and one Invoke deck. And then in London, I can't remember exactly how many Spirals topped, but it was at least 25. The only decks that I can remember that were the other part of the top 32 were three Pendulum Magicians, one Burning Abyss, and one Invoked. I can't remember anything else other than those five, so somewhere between 25 to 27 Spiral decks were in the top 32 of YCS London. But, so the hits that were done to Spirals were Spiral Gear Drone to one, and Spiral Quick Fix to one as well. Um, and then an indirect hit to Spirals in the form of Set Rotation being limited to one as well. So those are the entirety of the, that's the entirety of the hits on this Forbidden Limited list, on this ban list. It's just those four hits of all those cards going from three to one. Gofu, Quick Fix, Drone, and Set Rotation. And they're all very interesting hits uh, in terms of how they, you know, were basically handled. Uh, like I said about Gofu, I don't believe that Gofu was necessarily game-breaking until we got Crystron Needle Fiber. Uh, because, like, that card is insane. That card is Gofu, you keep a token, you do the Gofu and the token into the Needle Fiber. Needle Fiber summons a tuner out of your deck, and then you abuse that. And you still had a Gofu token left over, so it's just super value. Um, if any Link monster was the, you know, basis of Gofu needing to be limited or hit or in any fashion, it's definitely that Crystron card. So this seems like a preemptive hit for that more than anything else. But like I said, the, uh, the TCG side of things kind of confirmed that Gofu wasn't really that much of a problem in the Link era, because the OCG, they preemptively limited the card before a Link monster ever came out. Um, and so, making a Link 3 out of a Gofu, or making a Link Spider, uh, and a Proxy Dragon, or an Eeb, um, 
or a deco talker or whatever just didn't prove to be that game breaking uh, in terms of how Konami thought it would be in Japan versus how it came over in the TCG. Uh, so it was a, it was nice that we got to experiment with that for uh, for a little bit while it lasted. But otherwise, the spiral hits are very interesting. It's like they inadvertently banned machine dupe without wanting to touch machine duplication itself because with quick fix and drone both at one. Those are the deck's two most solid normal summons, Quick Fix being a searcher for Spiral Gear cards, and Drone making sure that your you know, Super Agent and your Double Helix are going to guaranteed call the top right card. Um, these cards being Machine Dupe targets was insane. Like, Drone plus Machine Dupe was an insane interaction, Quick Fix plus Machine Dupe was an insane interaction. Um, people were calling for Machine Dupe to be banned or limited or whatever. Uh, people were talking about Quick Fix going to 1 because of the spam ability, but I think there were better hits to the deck that could have been made rather than just these two cards, but I am happy with these hits. If Quick Fix needed to be hit, or if Quick Fix was going to be hit, then Drone definitely needed to be hit as well because otherwise, you know, you'd still just be able to machine dupe out Drones and you're arguably still in the same situation you were in before because Drone is also a 1 for 1 target and you also have 6 other copies of it at least because of Spiral Resort and Terraformings, so it's definitely a huge... You have a huge amount of consistency getting you to your drone regardless. So unless they were going to hit machine duplication, they couldn't really get away with just limiting quick fix. Uh, limiting quick fix is a very interesting thing. It keeps the deck from being able to spam links around freely, which I do like. But again, I don't think the quick fix and drone were necessarily the poster children problems. I think the main problem that the deck has in terms of what its main meat of its plays are are the interaction between Double Helix and Master Plan. Master Plan specifically, being able to be summoned from deck for free, being able to get you a search for a Spiral Monster, then you link away with it, losing no resources, and you get two searches for Spiral Resort, which searches another monster, and then a Spiral Mission card. So, like, there's there's a lot of different, like, aspects of that that are just very unappealing from, a, uh, from like, a healthy game standpoint of how one card can just become four. Um, while you never lost the card to begin with because you just linked away with it and you got that card for free. Uh, so it's very interesting that I, I find it very interesting that Konami decided to keep that card around um, or the interaction around in the way that it did because people everywhere on the internet love to jump at the fact of calling a deck dead without any testing or without any uh, any sort of uh, proper mindset going into it. And people are saying, woo, spirals are dead. And that's the, <laughs> that's the furthest thing from the truth. Spirals are so much very alive. They are still probably the best deck even. Uh, the only thing that changed is that they are not having any unfair interactions of quick fix machine dupe or quick fix just multiple times a turn in general. I mean multiple in terms of like more than five <laughs> to be able to link spam. Uh, those those interactions went away, but what still exists is double helix into master plan, master plan giving you a bunch of searches, and baking double helix and then linking away into uh, into like a deco talker or something with your master plan and your double helix automatically makes spiral sleeper alive, which could have been searched off master plan, and then the resort that you search off master plan could also search for uh, for spiral gear last resort. Which then still establishes Sleeper plus rat Last Resort, um, and then there's still the possibility of having uh, Handy Wire in there as like a Phoenix Wing Wind Blast. So the core of the Spiral Deck's, you know, good engine pieces and its win condition in terms of being able to just freely put up Sleeper and have Last Resort on it to deal with your resources or to, you know, search the trap to, you know, Phoenix Wing Wind Blast essentially, one of your cards to the top of the deck. That core engine is still very intact. Um, which is why I find it very interesting that they decided to hit Set Rotation as well. Uh, set Rotation is a very interesting card. It forces you to play Garnets in your deck and forms the subpar field spells. Um, now the field spell you give your opponent is definitely a problem in the fact that it's a field spell that can't be activated. Um, so I guess that is an issue. But the main thing that, uh, that I find interesting about them hitting Set Rotation is that why would you hit Set Rotation when it would be a lot more interesting if you would hit Spiral Resort. Um, I should explain. Spiral Master Plan's second effect of when this card is sent to the graveyard from the field, you can add one Spiral Resort and another card from your deck to your hand. You have to add the Spiral Resort. So if Konami had decided to limit Spiral Resort, you essentially make Master Plan a lot less of a valued card and it makes the interaction a lot more, you know, just fair in terms of what Double Helix can do. Because if you see Spiral Resort before you make a Double Helix to summon Master Plan from deck, Master Plan cannot search 
two cards when it goes to graveyard because it has to physically be able to search spiral resort or else you can't activate the effect it searches spiral resort and a card it's not search spiral resort and or a card it's you have to search resort and then another card so if you can't search the spiral resort then you can't legally activate the effect and that would have been a funny little interaction to sort of curb the power level of master plan while not really hurting the deck's overall, you know, consistency enabling pool because you could easily still play Spiral Resort, you could easily play multiple terraformings, you could play Set Rotation if you wanted to, uh, but then it would open you up to playing like Pseudo Space as you, like your second field spell to get another Spiral Resort effect, but then it would also just be fair in the hole because Pseudo Space wears off, Pseudo Space is just a blank, and then your stuff isn't protected from targeting. I don't know. That's just my opinion of what would have been a much more, you know, well-rounded and sort of funny hit to the deck to curve its power performance. Because it would have directly influenced the double helix plus master plan, uh, plan play. Which is what really catapulted the deck into its success. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm glad that Quick Fix and Drone are at one. And I'm specifically glad that Quick Fix is at one. Because it definitely was a problem. But in terms of the Spiral deck's, like, main win condition, it wasn't the problem. Um, so I think that the hit is very much just something that curbs its ability to make link spamming a thing, which is fine. We can, if you're not able to make Trigate Wizard and uh, and Link Karibo, which are coming out shortly, then the deck definitely has a hard time in that regard. But otherwise, I think the deck could have you know sustained a few more hits because I think it still is very much the best deck because it's still going to require you to play hand traps to play against it. It's going to be a little bit easier to deal with because again, it's just not going to be firewall spams for days because of a quick fix. But it will still be able to put up Sleeper plus Last Resort rather efficiently. And that is kind of a problem for any deck trying to go second. So you are still going to be having to play things like Evenly Matched to try and deal with it. You're going to have to be dealing with um, with uh, hand traps to prevent your opponent from playing those cards. It's just uh, it's just very interesting how this is being stripped. Jesus. How this is being structured as a whole. I just had, a, had like an air bubble get caught in my throat. That wasn't fun. But anyway... The main thing I wanted to talk about for just a, even a little bit for this video was that I really like what this ban list could potentially represent for us because they've given us a date for the next ban list of no sooner than January 2018. Now I would personally really love it if Konami as a company started doing very very frequent ban lists like every month and a half to two months after a couple of events have happened or after an event or two has happened or after a set release has happened in a little you know a little bit of time like a week or so is you know you know passed to uh to feel out the waters of what's going on and i'd like these lists to come and i'd like these lists to have very minor hits like this list did this list didn't kill spirals at all and it didn't make it unplayable at all but it was a very quick list that very quickly addressed a problem and it was something that was, you know, handled very, very promptly and, and accordingly. So I would personally love if this ban list, you know, procedure of giving us a list, a month and a half-ish time frame goes by, and then you give us another list that just ha hit like one, two, or three cards, just to, you know, sort of keep the, like, the game dynamically flowing in a good, healthy direction by addressing one or two problems at a time. They don't need to be the biggest problems, but as long as they are problems then that's going to be a great way to maintain healthy status of the metagame because it will allow the game to be ever evolving and ever shifting because the biggest problem in this game that is one of the biggest things that I have a problem with is how how easy it is for us to go such long expanses of time without ban lists and we just get a really broken release and it's obviously a broken release it obviously just destroys the game's uh, metagame and shifts everything in its favor, and then it just stays there for months and months and months. So this is a very dynamic game, and that's why we play it, because it's a very, very full-function, full-featured game that is meant to be ever-changing and ever-evolving, you know, evolving, but it gets stale really quickly, because the best is always going to be the best. Um, so like, if we have these little lists that come out every one to two months, after every couple of events or whatever, just to sort of make minor tweaks to things, I would be so full on that because it would keep the game from becoming stale as quickly, it would keep things dynamic, and also the fact that they're even telling us that we are getting lists at certain points at the soonest, it at least gives us a time frame of when we can expect to start thinking about when lists are coming. So. If future lists get handled this way, I would be really happy. I'd be a lot happier than I have been in this game in a long time because 
I've, I've had some uh, some good days and some bad days in this game. I've considered quitting this game. I've loved this game all in uh, all in the span of like the last like 15 days. Like it's it's been a it's been a rough roller coaster ride for me in the past two weeks in terms of trying to identify my priorities with playing this game, which is not something you should have to do if you're trying to enjoy a hobby. But anyway, regardless, those are just my thoughts for this video. Uh, those are my thoughts in general about the ban list structuring and my thoughts on the hits on this current ban list. Let me know if you think I miss anything or if you agree with anything I've said or disagree or whatever. Let me know of your thoughts and stuff like that in the comments down below. I'd love to hear them. But other than that, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Links, as always, are in the description down below to my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page. If you like the content I've been making as of recently and want to support my ability to continue creating that content, then Patreon is the best way to do so. As well as if you're interested in getting access to my private Discord server to chat with me and a bunch of other people, or if you're interested in monthly Yu-Gi-Oh! product giveaways, then definitely go check out the Patreon reward over on that link in the description as I've said already and any support that you'd like to give the channel and myself would be greatly appreciated in advance and you'd have my thanks in advance as well because it helps out a lot as I've said many times in the past but other than that as I've already said thanks for watching thanks for your time let me know your thoughts in the comments down below as I've already said and as usual guys take care I'll see you in the next video but anyway, now the video's over, I'd like to give a special thanks to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, and Eric Gertson, as well as everybody else that's currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You guys help out a lot more than you may know, you have my eternal gratitude, and you guys are forever awesome. Thank you so much for the support.